Hey guys, welcome back. We are about a week away from the Q2 expected earnings date for GameStop. Let's go through a couple things. I wanna talk about the bull case for GameStop, what I like about it. I wanna talk about some of the misinformation being pushed out on the Huxers channels, just to kind of make sure you guys have the real information. I wanna talk about trading cards, Q2 cash, what's gonna be on the balance sheet and what kind of interest we can expect on the income statement from that. And finally, we'll go through a couple of scenarios for what the earnings might look like for Q2. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, stick around, let's get right into it. Let's begin with the chart since I have it up on the screen here. GameStop closed the day at $20.74. Four daily red candles. If you've been following my TA videos on the YouTube shorts, you know that one thing that I'm heavily looking at is the supply zones in red and the demand zones down in green. And so the fact that it ran up to 23.20 or so in that supply zone and then it rejected back down is not really a surprise to us. And as I'm thinking about trading GameStop, if I'm going to be doing some buys, I want them down there deep in that demand zone if I can get it. Remember that none of us doing TA have an exact crystal ball exactly where a stock is going to bottom out or top out. But if you're following my channel, you know that I use these supply and demand zones to give myself my best chance of getting a low entry and then selling into a point where I think the stock is going to reject. This is kind of a weird week to be trading GameStop because earnings is just a week away and nobody knows for sure exactly what the revenue numbers and the income numbers are going to be. The chart has been trending down for four days. Is it going to continue trending down towards that 200 moving average down near $18? I don't know, I'm going to watch it every day and see if I can get a good entry. And I don't know if that will be before or after earnings, we're just going to have to wait and see. My last buy on GameStop was on this big dip at 1934 and I sold it the next day when it popped up. So I don't have any GameStop right now. I'm just looking for a good entry, a risk-free entry for my next leg on the trade. Looking at my dashboard for GameStop, kind of a high level assessment of the risk of owning GameStop in general. It's mostly green and that is what we wanna see. We do have a red box on the revenue growth rate and we're gonna talk about revenue and earnings today because that is something I think retail is not really focused on that Wall Street certainly is and that is something that is holding the price back at least for the moment. As we get into the part of the video where I'm going to talk about the Q2 earnings, I want to begin by talking about what I like about GameStop. What are the bullish things that we can say about GameStop? Because let's be blunt, there's a lot of people parroting misinformation about me or this channel that I'm against them or I'm against GameStop investors or I don't like GameStop. Complete hogwash, people just parroting misinformation yapped out there by loudmouth hucksters who don't want you guys to get good, balanced, fact-based financial analysis on GameStop from somebody who is trading it successfully, buying low and selling into run-ups. And everybody has their different way of trading. You guys can trade however you like. If you're a buy and hold GameStop person, I have no problem with that. If you're a buy every day GameStop person, I have no problem with that. I have my way of trading you have your way of trading. But we often see on social media or YouTube, people who don't really have a firm grasp on the facts or the financials and their automatic defense mechanism is ad hominem attacks, personal attacks, insults, because they don't want to deal with the actual cold hard facts of this play. And I want to point that out to you guys because you need to be wary about who is actually providing you factual information and who is deflecting from the facts by making their content about insults. So things that I like about GameStop, and this is an evolving play. The bankruptcy thesis is pretty much dead. The balance sheet is strong. They're likely to end this Q2 with over 4 billion in cash based on the recent cash raises they did just a couple months ago. And they have pretty much no debt on the balance sheet. And the other thing that I like is there is strong insider ownership and we see insider buys 
from the executives and the board at GameStop. And a strong balance sheet is important. It gives GameStop a lot of time to figure out what they wanna do next to pivot the business. The other thing having all of that cash on the balance sheet does is probably give the shorts a little bit of concern, at least in the short term, because they don't know what Ryan Cohen or GameStop is going to do with that cash. And they don't wanna be on the wrong side of a trade being short GameStop when some announcement comes out that the retail traders or the market gets behind and rallies the price up. And I think that's why we've seen the short interest declining on GameStop. In just the past couple months, we've seen the short interest decline from 27% to 10%. But the fact remains, Wall Street knows exactly what the balance sheet looks like right now. The $4 billion in cash and the book value of GameStop is factored into the current price, and Wall Street is looking for earnings. With a trailing 12-month P.E. ratio of 255 and a forward P.E. ratio of 207, based on today's price, GameStop is clearly overvalued if you're looking at it from an earnings perspective, which is what Wall Street is looking at and looking for. And so Ryan Cohen is going to need to deliver something with that cash on the balance sheet to justify the current price. We're going to have to have some earnings to get a real PE ratio where GameStop price is just going to be ground down over time. And maybe your answer in response to that is in a year or two, they'll have earnings or when Ryan Cohen does something, they'll have earnings and the price will be justified. And I would agree with that. But for right now, until we have news, Wall Street is going to punish the price or attempt to punish the price because there is lack of earnings to justify the current P.E. ratio. So if you want to speculate on future potential earnings, however far in the future that is, I have no problem with that. But in the meantime, until we actually have news to justify the price based on a reasonable industry P.E. ratio, say around 25, 35, even 40 if you want to. Until then, don't be surprised if Wall Street keeps this price under pressure on GameStop. In my view, this is a real problem that the GameStop content creators are avoiding talking about because it is inconvenient, it's uncomfortable, and I get it. And so what do they talk about next? The book value. Let's talk about the book value misinformation for just one second. Book value is your assets minus your liabilities on the balance sheet. And with the recent cash raise that GameStop did, the book value of GameStop is going to come in at just over $10 on the upcoming quarterly earnings. Wall Street already knows that. People like to pretend on YouTube, I hear them say, wait till Wall Street finds out, guys. They found out, they knew the day that cash was raised, what the new book value per share was, just like I did, just like anyone who can use a calculator does. These guys aren't dummies. For GameStop, book value is basically it's cash, and Wall Street is not going to pay a premium for cash. There's not going to be any magic run up on the price in the Q2 earnings just because Wall Street finds out that the book value is slightly over $10 per share. That is factored into the price right now. And book value really only matters if GameStop was liquidated, your shares would be worth just over $10 per share, according to book value. But again, a premium is not given to a stock based on the cash in its balance sheet, based on book value. The premium on a stock is based on future earnings. Again, I'm circling back to it is inconvenient to talk about, but we need to talk about the lack of earnings and we need to focus on when will there be some earnings. That's when we get some analyst upgrades, potentially, depending on what those earnings expectations are. The fact is revenue has been on the decline for a long time for GameStop and to their credit, Ryan Cohen and management has done an excellent job of cutting costs to keep up with that revenue decline. But the core business is not profitable. GameStop eked out a profit over the last year only because of the interest earned on their balance sheet, on their cash, not because of their core business. So we need to see a core business transformation, an acquisition, something that brings new blood, new life, new earnings into the company to get Wall Street excited and get some new price targets. So let's talk about that interest income that we might see on Q2 earnings or for the rest of this year. I hear some wild things being said. In fact, I heard someone say today that GameStop's gonna make $500 million a year in interest income, and that is just not true. It's impossible. If GameStop has 4 billion on the balance sheet, earning 5% in a money market fund, 
and T-bills, that's going to be a maximum of $200 million a year. And they're going to have some of that money not invested. It's going to be in a non-interest bearing account because they're going to need it to pay bills. So we're going to downrate that $200 million annual. I don't know exactly what the number is going to be. It's going to be some number under $200 million. And if the Fed cuts rates, then that interest income is going to decline some more. I ran some rough calculations on GameStop's $1 billion position in the first month of Q2. And let's just give it $4 billion for the last two months. They are probably going to make somewhere under 35 million for the quarter, between 30 and 35 million. I think that it is a little bit reckless to assume off the bat without hearing from them that they fully invested the entire $4 billion. Let's make reasonable assumptions, then we're not disappointed. And if they surprise us, then that is just good news. To repeat, and this is just my opinion based on the math, I think it would be reasonable to expect for Q2 that we see between 30 and 35 million in interest income from GameStop. For the fiscal year, we've already got Q1 behind us. I just estimated Q2 at $35 million. We got Q3 and Q4. I think if we add all of these quarters up and factor in the potential of the Fed cutting rates, it's reasonable to assume for this fiscal year, a number around $135 million for annual interest income from GameStop. And we could add in a little margin of error, 10 or $15 million plus or minus off that number. Before we talk about trading cards and actually look at the numbers for what GameStop might show us in a week or so when we get the Q2 earnings, I wanna talk about one other thing that I see often mischaracterized. When social media people are talking about GameStop, they mischaracterize the dilution. They tell you guys, don't worry, that $21 that you see right now is really $29 if you ignore the dilution. Well, why don't you do that for every other play that got diluted, like a, a Mullen or an AMC? Why don't you tell them what their shares are really worth? It's just a disingenuous shifting the shells around a shell game, misdirecting people, misleading them. It's blatant misinformation. Dilution is dilution, just call it what it is. The price got lowered because there's more shares and the value of every share that people are holding declined. The price is the price. Moving on to trading cards, I'm happy to see GameStop exploring additional revenue streams. This is a great thing. I have been looking into trading cards, talking to trading card business owners, both in box stores and web-based stores. And my DD has led me to the conclusion that the impact of trading cards to GameStop's next quarter or probably the rest of this year is being vastly overestimated by social media influencers. That's just my opinion based on my DD. We'll find out in a week or so if they tell us any specific news or if we see a big increase in revenues or margins, maybe I'm wrong. But my thesis right now is that we should not count on any major impact from trading cards on Q2. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'm happy to say I'm wrong. We'll find out in a week or so. Moving on to Q2 earnings. What can we expect for revenue? What can we expect for earnings per share when we also include in that expected $35 million of interest income? I see a lot of weird numbers out there on different websites. Uh, I see revenue from 800 million up to a billion dollars for the quarter. I don't know what it's going to be. We'll all find out together. So I'm not making any firm call, but I'll put a couple numbers in the spreadsheet here and we can see exactly what that translates to on earnings per share. And then we'll find out from GameStop in a week or so. In Q1, GameStop had revenue of $882 million, a gross margin of 27.73%. SG&A about $295 million, giving them a negative 11 cents for the quarter. Let's run through a couple scenarios. Number one being, what if there was the traditional slight slowdown in revenue from Q1 to Q2? If it came in a little bit lower than the previous quarter, let's assume that they improve the margins to 28% and improve the SG&A by reducing it to 290 million. When I also add in the interest income, let's let's bump it up to 35 million. That would give them a negative four cents EPS for Q2. If we want to model a scenario where they slightly beat, let's say you think that trading cards are gonna add several million dollars. Let's say they made $895 million for Q2 and keeping our SG&A at 290 and our gross margin at 28%, 
we'd have negative one penny, which is what some analysts are calling for. And if things really went bonkers, if GameStop made a billion dollars in Q2, then with that same gross margin, and we probably ought to bump up the SG&A a little bit, let's say $305 million, we would have a profit of a couple of pennies. So there's three scenarios to think about. I don't know which one it's gonna be. We'll find out in a week or so, and I will do a recap after they release their earnings. I guess in closing, the other thing that I wanna say is if you're expecting a major run up in the price based on Q2, we're gonna to need to see something beyond normal expectations. We're gonna to need to see a major revenue beat. We're gonna to need to see a major earnings beat. We're gonna to need to have some news from Warren Kitty or some news from Ryan Cohen that they decided to invest the money and they're gonna to need to tell us what we can expect earnings wise off of that investment. So if we get any of those, then I think the price has potential to move up. If we don't, I think we're gonna to continue to be range bound in this supply and demand zone that we have. So we will cross our fingers for good news and we'll all find out together in a week. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Love to hear from you. I am Tony DeNaro and I will see you on the next video.